Hello. In this brief knowledge clip, I will introduce you to the Mothers of Srebrenica ruling by the Dutch Supreme Court, our own Hoge Raad der Nederlanden, on the immunity of the United Nations from the domestic jurisdiction of the courts. And so from the, uh, the jurisdiction of the civil courts in the Netherlands. But before I get to discussing the legal issues, I wanted to provide you with some background information on Srebrenica. There's a lot of stuff uh, written about what happened exactly in Srebrenica, but still some things are unclear. As so the, uh, the NIOT, the Netherlands Institute for War Documentation, uh, published a very elaborate and detailed report and there's also a report from the United Nations itself and from the French Parliament. So Srebrenica is uh, located in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina. You see it here on the map. So what happened in Srebrenica? What's the historical context? Well, in the 1990s, the violent breakup of the uh, former Yugoslav Republic uh, occurred. First, Slovenia and Croatia issued declarations of independence from Yugoslavia, and especially the latter's declaration led to violent clashes with the central Yugoslav army, which was dominated by Serbs. In 1992, the United Nations got involved. At the UN Security Council established the United Nations Protection Force, UNPROFOR, then in 1992, same year, Bosnia and Herzegovina declared their independence from uh, Yugoslavia. And this was immediately followed by uh, violent uh, repression uh, from the uh, Yugoslav army. And so fighting broke out between uh, the Bosnian Muslims uh, that proclaimed their independence and the Bosnian Serbs, uh, uh, Serb people that were located in Bosnia. And uh, the latter were supported by Serbia. Uh, Srebrenica, a town in eastern Bosnia, uh, became a Muslim enclave, uh, i.e. it became a place where Muslims gathered to shelter from the violence of the war. So they basically sought refuge there in Srebrenica, uh, tried to escape the aggression from the Bosnian Serbs, Bosnian Serb army. In 1993, Commander Philip Moron of the, uh, Morillon, sorry, of the uh, United Nations Protection Force paid a visit to the uh, civilians trapped in uh, the Muslim enclave of Srebrenica, and he basically promised them, Vous êtes maintenant sous la protection de l'ONU, je ne vous abandonnerai jamais. So he made a promise on behalf of the United Nations not to abandon uh, the Muslim population trapped in Srebrenica. Uh, pursuant to that promise, uh, the United Nations designated Srebrenica as a safe area, which was to be protected by a traditional peacekeeping force, UNPROFOR, uh, backed up by NATO airstrike, and a weapons embargo was imposed on uh, the enclave. So nobody was allowed to have weapons, to carry weapons. Um, then, in 1995, everything went wrong, eh? so some of the uh, peacekeepers of UMPROFOR were held hostage by the Bosnian Serbs, and then in July 1995, the Bosnian Serb army basically took uh, Srebrenica, and the civilians that were trapped there, uh, they fled to the uh, neighboring compound in Potocari, and from there, the women and children were evacuated, uh, but the uh, men, uh, the, the Bosnian Muslim men, they were taken away and later killed by the Bosnian Serbs. The problem is that all this happened under the eyes of Dutch Bet, and that is a Dutch battalion of uh, United Nations peacekeepers that was uh, stationed in Srebrenica uh, at the relevant times. So that's a bit an overview of the history of what happened in Srebrenica. So what is then the case, uh, the case brought by the mothers of Srebrenica against the Netherlands and the United Nations about? Well, first I wanted to make clear what this case is not about. It's not a case 
uh, before the International Court of Justice. We do have a case uh, relating to Srebrenica uh, before the International Court of Justice. That's a case between Bosnia and Serbia, but that is not the case I want to talk about now. I'm also not going to talk about the many, many, many uh, criminal prosecutions held at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, uh, where, for example, uh, Karadzic and Mladic were uh, held responsible and convicted for their contribution to the genocide in Srebrenica. So my focus is on the legal proceedings before the Dutch Supreme Court, uh, the Hoge Raad. There are other cases before the Dutch Supreme Court relating to Srebrenica. For example, Hassan Nuhanovic brought a case against the Netherlands. He held the Netherlands responsible for a failure to prevent the genocide. That case is very interesting, but I'm not going to talk about that now. I'm also not going to talk about the criminal prosecutions uh, against uh, Karamans, the commander of Dutch Bad. What I am going to address is the uh, legal case brought by the Mothers of Srebrenica, a foundation of surviving relatives of the uh, Bosnian Muslims against the Netherlands and the United Nations. So the Mothers of Srebrenica brought legal proceedings against the United Nations, and that raises interesting issues. And the most important issue is the issue of immunity, because normally, the United Nations enjoys immunity from the uh, jurisdiction of the courts of all its members. So I wanted to focus on the ruling on the immunity of the United Nations. That's a ruling of the Dutch Supreme Court uh, dated 13 April 2012. So what is the legal issue? If you look at the United Nations Charter, Article 105 of the United Nations Charter, you see that the United Nations enjoys in the territory of each of its members such privileges and immunities as are necessary for the fulfillment of its purposes. And Article 1 lists the purposes of the United Nations, and one of them is to maintain international peace and security. So because the Netherlands is one of the member states of the United Nations, under Article 105, it is obliged to respect the immunity of the organization. The immunity is further elaborated upon in the Convention on Immunities of the United Nations, to which the Netherlands is also party. Article 2, paragraph 2 says that the UN shall enjoy immunity from every form of legal process, Period. And then Article 8, paragraph 29 is also relevant. It says that the United Nations shall make provisions for appropriate modes of settlement of disputes of a private law character to which the UN is a party. In other words, the United Nations enjoys immunity from the domestic courts of its members. So victims of uh, actions of the UN have no legal remedy uh, at the domestic level. Thus, the UN must provide an alternative legal remedy. And Article uh, 8, paragraph 29 um, creates an obligation of the UN to establish such an alternative legal remedy. At the same time, the Netherlands also is under an obligation to provide everyone within its jurisdiction access to court. So the Mothers of Srebrenica, a foundation established under Dutch law, has the right to uh, have access to court. So that brings a dilemma to the Netherlands, because on the one hand, they have to respect the immunity of the United Nations from every form of uh, legal process. On the other hand, they must provide access to the court, uh, to the Mothers of Srebrenica. Obviously, the Netherlands cannot do both. So which of those two obligations prevails over the other? That is the question. Um, the Dutch Supreme Court uh, settled this question by reference to Article 103 of the United Nations Charter, which contains a sort of conflict rule. I'm going to quote. <clears throat> 
in the event of a conflict between the obligations of the members of the United Nations under the present charter and their obligations under any other international agreement, the obligations under the present charter shall prevail. So the Dutch Supreme Court in its ruling on the immunity of the United Nations from the jurisdiction of the Dutch courts, uh, issued in 2012, concluded from this article that the obligation to respect the immunity of the United Nations prevailed over the obligation to provide the mothers of Srebrenica access to court because the former obligation uh, followed from the United Nations Charter and the other obligation followed from uh, human rights treaties. And under, according to Article 103 UN Charter, obligations under the UN Charter prevail over other obligations. An argument was made that perhaps the right of access to a court is of a peremptory character, is of jus cogens. And under international law, obligations of jus cogens prevail over any other obligations, even obligations under the United Nations Charter. But the Dutch Supreme Court was not uh, persuaded by this argument. Uh, in view of the Dutch Supreme Court, the rules of state immunity are procedural in character and are confined to determining whether or not the courts of one state may exercise jurisdiction in the respect of another state. They do not bear upon the question whether or not the conduct in respect of which the proceedings are brought was lawful or unlawful. So there was not a direct clash in this uh, case. The mothers of Srebrenica were not uh, persuaded by the ruling of the Hoge Raad, so they uh, took their case to the European Court of Human Rights. But the U European Court of Human Rights basically agreed with the Dutch Supreme Court, the Hoge Raad, um, and uh, accepted the argument that uh, the Dutch courts have to prefer the immunity of the United Nations from domestic jurisdiction over the right of access to uh, court. Thanks for your attention.